Hi everybody, I've got a 45 minute soul journey session. I'm gonna go ahead and read the goals and get started here. Okay, so I would like this session to focus on healing anything that comes up regarding my overall reproductive system. I've had many irregular periods during the past year, as well as strange abdominal pain occurring at different times throughout the month, which is abnormal for me. I love to get any perspective you may gain on this issue in particular or anything that you feel guided to explore. Okay. I'm just absorbing all of this in here. All right. Okay. I'm ready to get started now. Okay. All right. This is hard to explain, but Okay, so I feel like my ears are bothering me really bad um, deep down inside. Almost like somebody stuck their finger all the way into my ear on both sides and it's bothering the living daylights out of me. So this is happening all the while in what would be defined as a reproductive system, sexual body. There's just like um, a constant squish um, going on. Just like like um a sponge that just like squish and then all the the water comes out and then we just squish it again when it's full and then we just squish it again when it's full and so that that's what's happening here as the first thing i'm experiencing all right i'm gonna just relax the sexual body down and I'm going to relax the ears down. They say, how in the world did your ears get connected with this? <laughs> I'm going to relax these two down. And we're going to just ears. We're going to, you're going to be in a whole nother universe here and sexual body. You're going to be in a whole other universe here. So I just, I feel like we need to just separate these two for a little bit and slow everything on down, relax it on down. Gosh, your ears are still hurting. It's like somebody invaded a space that people just don't invade, you know? You just don't stick your finger down somebody's ear hole. <laughs> you just simply don't do that. So it's violating and it's wrong on so many levels. So this ear thing has a paralleling experience to your sexual body. It's, there's something wrong on so many levels going on here. And it would be the same as somebody taking their finger and jamming it down your ear hole. It's horrifying. It's so horrifying. It's like really bad. There's a lot of anger underneath all of this too, okay? There's a lot of venting that needs to come out. Proper venting. There, you're not properly venting. So uh, it is like really angry. So we're gonna properly vent today. A lot of anger. <laughs> it's been bottled up for too long, okay? Uh, it was like, uh, was so mad, it's shaking. Uh, it's doing this. Ah! It's like doing this. It's still like doing this. Ah! Like so much pent up deep down anger. Not getting expressed on the right level, okay? <laughs> ah! It's just ah, so much anger happening here. Now that feels better. See, we just need to get anger out sometimes. <laughs> that feels a lot better. Okay, let's see here. Let's keep moving forward. 
Yeah, there's still like tufts of anger going on, but it's nowhere near as like it was a volcano that's been trying to explode for a long time. And it's just, it just doesn't get to. Since when does the volcano not get to erupt? Like nothing ever holds a volcano back. The volcano just does its thing. That's what volcanoes do. So you're like the volcano that's supposed to be doing its thing, but you're holding it inside. I mean, there, this anger energy, okay? It's, it's got to be reconciled. Very exhausting right now. I mean, there's a lot of exhausting energy coming around my head. And you've created a separate self. So there's an apparition of you. But the apparition of you is also you. There's a much more denser version, and then there's this apparition. Why did you do this? You you literally are sitting down. I'm looking at you. You're sitting down. Here you are in front of me. But then here you are over here, like a ghostly apparition. <laughs> so we'll figure this out. <laughs> You're ignoring her. You are ignoring her. And you act like she isn't there. You just act like she's not there. Which means you're ignoring yourself. And the part of yourself that you're ignoring is now a ghost. And the ghost is still alive haunting you. She's still there. And you really need to face her. You need to be all uh, that you are. You need to be all that you are. So what we're coming across here so far is what is beneath the surface of what's going on in your reproductive system, okay? On the energy side of things. So let's keep moving forward here. You refuse to acknowledge that she is there. I mean, you feel like you're whole. You actually do. You feel like you are whole. But you're not. And there's a part of you that's over here that you are ignoring. You ignore this part of you in order to define yourself as whole. But you aren't. There is a part of you missing in your life. <clears throat> I don't, I'm trying to get to know her a little bit. I, it's, I don't even, I'm still trying to figure out what she's like, okay? You are, the you that is prominently here, that you is, seems like what you are, all of you, okay? You appear to be whole, you do. Um, so now I'm going to try and get to know her to figure out what is this aspect of you that you're ignoring, okay? And she's not easy to get a, get in touch with. She's not easy to talk to. She's, And it's not that she isn't easy to talk to. There's a lot of blocks around her. There's a lot of... It's like you're trying to make her invisible. You're trying to push her away. And if she's blocked enough, if there's enough, if she's in enough shells, she becomes more and more and more and more silent. So you can't hear her. And when you don't, can't hear her, then you're whole. And this has to do with sexuality. Okay. All right, you're not listening to a part of your divine feminine voice. And so I've got to do something here. It's not easy for me to break these shells down either. I mean, you've got this under lock and key <laughs> times 10, at least times 10. It's pretty secure. <laughs> You aren't going to let me in there. I can't force you to acknowledge her, but I can encourage you to. I'm just going to start by telling the whole you 
that you're not whole. She's got a shield up too, so she doesn't have to hear me say that. She has no idea that I just said that to her. She has no idea that I just told her that she is not whole. <laughs> she is so busy. I mean, her mind is so busy. This whole you is... I mean, she's a really good thinker. <laughs> she's really observant and perceptive. And she's looking at this paperwork and then this paperwork and then thinking it over and then saying, oh, and then, I mean, she's an analytical. She's smart and she doesn't hear me, but she knows. She knows what I'm talking about. So now I'm looking at two compartments. Um, there's a box with the whole you in it, and there's a box with the you that it, it's a separate you that's in many, 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 many shells, like unbreakable shells, silenced, okay? Forever, forevermore silenced, forever. And the boxes kind of glow a red color but I can still see through them. And you're living, um, I mean, this that I'm working on, on the energy side of things is in a cave, okay? It's not pitch black in here. There is light, I can see. Hmm. Hmm. Really good at being quiet. And these two boxes that are connected, they seem to be sinking into the rock ground. So slow you wouldn't even notice. And the as they sink into the ground, it's like you're burying yourself, um, but you actually become busier. So as they sink into the ground, um, it is on one level a reflection of you are burying yourself, okay? And on the other side, as you continue to bury yourself, you become more productive. <laughs> so, I mean, you're even more focused on the paperwork and this and the that and the thinking, 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 analytical, um, making decisions, thinking, I mean, you're even like more focused on work. Yeah, this, you're not just one thing, okay? You're not just really focused at work. You're lots of things. And hmm, you're natural. You're a natural creation, your natural form. You're, you're a part of nature, so you have a nature about you. But your nature isn't just being analytical and focused on work or on what you're doing with your day, okay? It's not just that. You have a nature as well. So is she a part of your nature that you have silenced? <sighs> this is getting tough. <sighs> it's like a uncomfortable feeling and I will say this one is not easy to just make it fix it it's not an easy one to just fix it because there's a lot of a lot of ins and outs about it and it's gonna take a lot of time to change your pace and a lot of time to allow the nature back into yourself a lot of time to get to know who you are um it could just take life you know but this is interconnected with your issues okay that you're having i'm gonna let this just 
do its thing over here for a bit, okay? And I'm gonna just focus on more of the physicality of what's going on, not the energy inspirations that create the dis the disharmonized flows <laughs> that encourage then the physical responses. I'm gonna just look at the physical sides of things, okay? So I'm just gonna go into more of those frequencies and just let this simmer and do its thing for a bit. All right. Hmm. I'm just going straight in here. Just a minute, I'm just relaxing things down. There's stress I'm going on right now, so I'm just... Gosh, I mean, do you... I mean, you've been... It's like things you don't need to hear about yourself. Like violating your sense of um, your own beauty. I mean, in here, it is a degrading you. There's a lot of de degrading you. Just, um, you're not perfect, but really making you feel imperfect. Well, sure, I'm not perfect. That's what makes me special and wonderful. That's what I love about myself. No, but you need to work on that. That's actually something you need to work on. But it's much ruder. It's just saying it in a very rude way. And it's hurting you. And then that hurt gets stored in your sexual body. And that hurt is rampant in here. And... Hmm... I'm just going to continue to relax things on down. You know how you, you can ball up your fist when you're angry? You can do that inside your feminine, your uterus. I mean, it's almost like a big muscle that can clench when it's angry, too. <laughs> it feels like it's kind of clenched. And again, it's the volcano that isn't erupting. It's not natural. It's so unnatural. So you're you're aligned with an unnatural harmony. And and now you're the volcano that needs to erupt that will not. And eruption could be anger, eruption could be orgasmic, eruption could be, you know, it could be related to a lot of different things here. Um, but you're you're not aligned with what is a naturalness, okay? Volcanoes got erupt. It just got erupt. <laughs> we don't hold it back. It just has to happen. <laughs> and if we hold the volcano back, something's not right here. That volcano is supposed to erupt. It's not erupting. Something is not right here. <laughs> okay, so I'm, I'm actually going to relax down your uterus, okay, is what it would be like. I'm no medical doctor here, but that's kind of what it reminds me of. And it and it's balled up like two angry fists, okay? It needs to just relax. <sighs> Too much stress here. Wow, you are incredible. <laughs> you, uh, you are so smart. You have, uh, this is just a realm and you just don't visit that realm. So you actually let that realm just hang out over there. All the while you stay in your mind. So when you stay in your mind, you're unaffected. You're gonna be unaffected by what is happening here in your um, the harmony of your sexual body. You're not going to be aware of it because you're choosing to stay in your mind and out of that place. <clears throat> So you're resisting, I mean, for you to be in balance, you, you need to be connected to that place. Your mind does, your communication does, your heart does, your emotions, everything needs to be. And it's not an ugly place, and you're not an ugly person, you're not a, and whatever those hurtful things are that have been said, you're awesome for being exactly. I mean, when anybody says you, you need to work on this because you're not physically perfect or whatever, 
It's like, sweet. I, I, you know what? I'm okay with myself. And, and that, see, you gotta turn anything negative into a positive here. You gotta do that. Gosh, there's a lot of hurt. There's a lot of hurt and you are a bit traumatized. I mean, there's some serious trauma going on here related to all of this. And because of the trauma, it keeps you separated because the trauma is just too much. And when the trauma is too much, now you're really good too at creating barriers and blocks. So you don't have to go there. And it keeps you extremely good at everything else, okay? So you're actually, um, it's like the tourniquet <clears throat> on the leg. So, you know, that the, we put the tourniquet on and now the rest of the body is saved. But there's no reason why the tourniquet needed to be put on here because the leg can actually heal without you having to cut it off. So you did this. You, your sexual body doesn't need to have a tourniquet on it for the rest of the body to function. And you're actually functioning extraordinarily well. You're a genius. You're functioning really, really well despite the fact that you have um, completely... Um, You've just moved this sexual body way over there. So, but I'm still whole. I'm still whole. You're just telling yourself this, but you're very convincing. And I'm still, I, this whole time that I've been talking, I've been relaxing too. So I'm, I'm just going to get back into the zone of the relaxing. I just want to see how things are coming along here. So as I relax, your uterus, it's, there's um, snuggling um, images of tender um, touches, like, um, like what feels like really warm, affectionate snuggling. Man, I will say this is, this whole thing is really hard for you. So you need to be ridiculously proud of yourself for exploring these goals in this session because this is hard stuff we're looking at here. This isn't easy at all. I can tell. I can tell it's very hard. Now we can start to understand why there's imbalances going on here. So a lot of it starts with how we are processing life as feelings and memories and they're repetitious. So they build up over time and those buildups create reactions. And then those reactions we try to suppress or we try to do this or we try to do that in order to continue stability, right? And so over time, this stuff builds up and now it becomes more physical, physically apparent. So, I mean, this this happens with past lives too. So, so maybe you have like, I mean, just throwing this out there, but it's not just, I mean, past life stuff can get layered in on this too, and you wouldn't even know that this is very feels very much so like something that you've been progressively working on, but you're working on it in the wrong direction. You're you're basically going to make sure that your reproductive region doesn't work anymore, actually do doesn't function anymore. So the trauma that you've got going on is severe enough that you are going to basically destroy your sexual body. And you it, it could become way worse later on where you would have to have a serious surgery done. Um, that's, you're just in the very beginning stages, but it's quite severe as it is right now, okay? So you gotta be really aware of this. And it always comes back to love, okay? So you're a hero, you're a courageous person, and you're doing everything as you, you the best way you know how, okay? But this is what it looks like, okay? <sighs> Man, there's just so much sorrow and anger and trauma and hurt and lied to. I mean, it just echoes. It's in and it's in the fibers of your uterus. It's in the fibers of the physical. It's in there. It's like in there. It's like the frosting on the cake is all this horrendous negativity is in there.
This is severe. You have, um, so I'm being shown another space. This is interconnected with what I've been just relaxing here, the uterus reproductive area, just relaxing it on down. They're showing me another space. It's a bit awkward looking, but you're kind of, um, you're standing, but you're leaning and there's a weird, uh, you're, there's a doctor here and you have a weird device, like a, some sort of thing. <laughs> It's like crutches, but it's for um, it wraps around the low, your lower waist, and then um, it's cutting off the circulation. It's just really tight. It's way too tight, and it hurts. This could describe abdominal cramps really easily. It's like a really tight rubber band um, all the way around your waist, but it's it's almost so tight it could slice you in half. Um, and there's like two wooden boards on both sides of the outer sides of your legs and you're just like um, Holding yourself up on this uh, bar here and the doctor is looking It's it's really painful. It's like you you want your lower half to be cut off And the problem also is that you want um, this to be fixed so what is actually going to fix this? Let's just say you continue doing the same thing that you're doing right now and it gets worse and worse and worse and worse. 10 years later, you're still doing this and it's just layering on, layering on and it's just getting worse. And then you go to a doctor. So the doctor then does what doctors do. And, it, and then after doctor does what doctors do, you're still doing the same habit, the same behavior that is ripping and destroying your sexual body. So anything a doctor does, you have to work on yourself here. So you, it starts with you before it starts with anybody else. It starts with you. And you're crying in pain, but you put yourself in this. And it's torturing you. All right, the next thing is the rubber band. We're still in the doctor's office. The rubber band starts to relax, and I start to see that um, you're pregnant, okay, is what it looks like. Like, you're, you're like, magically growing a full, full-term baby <laughs> very quickly. That's what the scene is changing into. But this is also very ridiculously painful. I mean... <sighs> So painful right now I mean you're being it's like it's like this baby is ten times larger than the heaviest human being on the planet and it is literally ripping you in apart so it's uh, so you're venting all of this right now so you, that's what you're showing me I'm just letting it out, letting it out. Man, you've got so much trauma here. And you keep torturing yourself. I mean, you do. And then suddenly, um, <laughs> we're, the doctor is just sort of like a, a mannequin in a way. He doesn't say anything or do anything. He's just there as a prop or something. We're in a doctor's office and there's a doctor. Okay. Well, I'm in here and I'm just sort of watching all of this horrendousness and I'm feeling it out. And it's like, you know, then suddenly a guy appears out of nowhere, comes over and has a knife and stabs you in the back. Okay. Just below the back of your rib cage just stabs you right in the back and it hits an organ of yours you don't react to this oddly enough it relaxes you And it diminishes the image of and the feelings of the baby start to diminish. And the hurt that is now stabbed in your back 
is even disappearing, but the knife is still there. And you just ignore it. As though nothing ever happened. And your belly is kind of, um, I mean, there's no pregnancy going on here. There's no weird contraption that is way too tight. You're just, you're just, um, turned around now and you're looking at me, but your belly kind of looks, um, jiggly and like there's, um, let's just throw some pool balls in a bag and then they're like moving around. It's very weird. So, so what your lower gut looks like. And you're just oblivious. You're just not... You're not uh, actually choosing to see or agree, like state... Like you're not choosing to even be aware of what the world just happened here. <laughs> oh, you're just, it's just like another day in the park, you know? <laughs> That's what this is like. It's so weird. Hmm. But you're really independent, and so any type of challenge you're going through in your life, I mean, you independently walk yourself out the door um, without asking for any help, without asking for anybody's time. You just handle it. I mean, you just, it's like, yeah, just went to the doctor, had this thing, and I just left. But, but did you see what actually had, did you know, did, did you, that, that was severe? I mean, do you need some help? You would just, no, I, I'm okay. I'm totally fine. Cause I'm whole, right? You're whole. That's what, that's what's going on here. You're not whole. Even now, I mean, I'm kind of going back to that where you're burying yourself alive the two parts of you um you you tell me that all of this is for the best and that you're doing this as the greatest gift that you could possibly give yourself god the people in your life and this is the best choice that you could possibly make but i say but but you're in pain your periods are irregular so you're your body is set, is screaming and saying, help me. But your mind is saying, everything is fine. So you're not actually choosing to listen to your body. At the conscious level, you're clearly listening to your body. But this part of you deep down inside, the orders are, everything is fine. So now everything is going to function as though nothing is going on there. Even though your mind is noticing but you're still allowing this stuff to layer on and affect this part of yourself. What can I do? I'm asking my spirit guides. So we've, we've got this analysis going on here. What can we do to like make the most effective impact right now today. What what is what can we do to create that? My spirit guides ask a question. So, and this is very important. I've never seen it in this way before, but they want to know want you to think about this, but how do you get light uh, into the inside of your body? How do you get light inside of yourself? And they're showing me that the sexual body brings light to your physical body through intimacy. And that light then is, is his food and information and healing and rebalancing and relaxing. It's super healing. So the sexual body 
through intimacy gives light to everything. You heard this, this you heard, and you're unable to say anything because it's just, there aren't words. It's just a bit of a, the, the, the awareness is pretty intense. You actually are a bit so disturbed, in a way disturbed, and saying, oh wow, that you go to the part of you that you have hid into silence. You've silenced it, and you disconnected it, you silenced it, put it away forever, buried it alive. Because you can't truly kill any part of yourself, no matter how hard you try. But you can put it in a lot of boxes, and eventually you'll never hear of it again, but it's still there and it's going to cause a lot of havoc as time goes on, right? You cannot kill any part of yourself. You have to learn how to, to work with those relationships. Work with your emotions. Work with your mind. Work with your sexuality. Work with what you have to work with, right? Because we don't just have relationships with people, we have relationships with ourself and all the different parts of ourself. So you are um, unlocking this, but you're a bit con just uncomfortable, you're nervous and you're stressed out because if you let this part of yourself free, what is that going to mean? Because you locked it up for a reason, which was what you needed in order to become balanced with yourself, your life, and everything in your life. You locked it up, and that brought achieved balance. So to unlock it is terrifying, is uh, freaking you out a bit, but you understand the importance of doing it now. She is so withered and a bit, uh, she's disabled is kind of what it's like. She can't, her mind isn't functioning right and she's not all there. Like you can see it in her eyes, like she's just not all there and she looks withered like a, a grape turned into a raisin, like she just looks withered. And an angel comes um, with a glass of, it looks like milk, but it's white water, okay? <laughs> it's water, but it's glowing white, but it looks like a glass of milk. Anyway, the angel gives it to you to drink this light, um, to bring the light into yourself. To, and um, gives it to the withered part of you, okay? So she's uh, consuming this. Hmm. Starvation. It's experiencing starvation. Even this cup of light is not enough to bring her back to life. Time. And I can't force her to just suddenly be refreshed. Yes, I'm back in business. You know, it's like there's too, so much damage here that time that needs to take time. And I tell the part of you that had chosen to define itself as whole is now acknowledging that it did do this. I'm saying you don't need to be afraid because 
this relationship is a, a slow rekindling. Um, it doesn't have to be suddenly there. It's just baby stepping it back. You don't have to just suddenly, bam, be there. It just, but you do need to acknowledge that this part of you is important. And it's important for a healthy life, healthy body, healthy everything. She's, so, you need to know this, but she's so aged, because you, you've, she's almost dead. I mean, that's, this is like, this is to recover her, but she's not coming back to life. So you've almost accomplished what you were trying to accomplish here, which was just letting go of that part of yourself, which was letting go of your sexuality. So that was going to bring sanity to your life because there's just too much trauma involved in it. Just too much trauma. And now um, that we're realizing that this trauma needs to be healed, um, you really pushed it to the extreme. But trauma did, and this is how you're working through the trauma. This was the survival instincts that you did, you chose. Um, so now we need to mend, um, heal, bring this back part of you back to life. And we're getting her into recovery. That's like rushing her in. She's on like a hospital bed. Stat, I need people in here. Stat, <laughs> resuscitate. So we're really um, helping here. And uh, she tells me that the reason why she is dying is because... Um, something having to do with having a baby. And, uh... It's like, um... Her, her role, if, if she's not going to have a baby, then she has no purpose. And... That baby image that we saw that was ripping you apart, this idea about baby is also intertwined in this, in all this trauma, okay? So there's also this energy, this baby, creating a baby energy is also in this trauma here, is also in this relationship of um, imbalances in your sexual body. And she asks me if, um, if she will have a baby or if she can have a baby. Give me a moment here. I'm, I want to make sure I, I say something that feels true to my heart. I mean, it's not for me to say, yes, you can, or no, no. But at the same time, it's quite clear that um, rejuvenation is step one here. Rejuvenation. You wouldn't want, it's sort of like, um, let's say you starved yourself for two straight weeks um, to prepare yourself for running a marathon. It's like, are you nuts? No, you, you don't run a marathon if you haven't eaten in two straight weeks. You need to eat. Um, so, so this is like, um, you know, my body has been pushed to the limits, um, severe trauma going on here, um, so can I have a baby? Well, you need to, to heal first. And as you heal, then then you get to decide that. But don't decide that it's all over. It's all, like, don't decide this. Like, you, you're I'm telling you when it comes to your reproductive system, you're, it's almost like you've, you're on the verge of deciding that um, you don't need it anymore. That it's not for you or your life. But that's why it hurts now. That's why it hurts. Because you're kind of like, um, you're killing it softly. Behind the scenes, with a lot of energy and trauma that you're not hearing in your mind, in your ears. <laughs> Although the first image was quite loud <laughs> and weird. But 
Yes, it is happening here. She wants me to tell her that she can have a baby now. And I just hold her and... It's just like so sad. It's like the only purpose in life is like a desecration and it's awful feeling like it's horrible it's like a it's a weird death sentence I'm just staying with this part of you and uh, she's starting to fall asleep. We've got her, we've got like IVs and this like white light water milk is coming on through and just pumping her full of it. <laughs> she's going to be resuscitating, swear to God. She just needs, she needs fresh air. She needs rehabilitation time, baby steps. And don't, don't decide what your future looks like. Don't decide those things. Just, but also relax. If you have anything that's angering you deep down inside, you just be natural. Um, I mean, there's, I'm, I'm a little bit uh, dizzy from the, all the energy going on from this, this hug and uh, the rehabilitation here is really warm hard to talk through it because it's just so warm it warms my heart because I, I can see you're like a, a flower that almost died but was uh saved at the last seconds you know like the last days of its life um and then started to be nurtured and um is now starting to come to life again and starting to turn into the beautiful flower it always was it just was neglected You, this part of you is not feeling neglected and you are recovering because the withered look is starting to disappear. I mean, when I say withered, I mean, you can't even see out your eyes. They're just like, it's all, you just like, I don't know, like you're totally withered up and you're gray in color and you don't look like you're going to last much longer. It's kind of but now the withering is disappearing and the colors coming back to you. Hmm. Okay, that's, that's all I gotta say for this. Hmm. This is a really good, important step. You definitely, I mean, you're brave. You're really, really brave to explore a session like this. You're really brave. And it's clear you. there's a lot going on here that has been hard. A lot of hard stuff going on here. And it's going to give you, you know, you're going to have a lot, of, a lot to work with here when it comes to recovering and uh, self-healing and self-love. And getting in tune with that part of yourself and just relaxing things down. There's another direction you can, there's always another direction. The tourniquet is one way, but there's always another way, you know? <laughs> okay. Thank you very much for the opportunity to help you with this. It's a big deal for me, so thank you. And um, for those of you watching, if any of you would like to explore a psychic session with me, please visit me at my website at abbynormalswisdomquest.com. Thank you all for watching. I wish you all a wonderful day.